Today we are going to talk tech tools, the top tools and the top tech skills that you need to be a successful VA. Today I want to share the top six tech skills that I think you need in order to be a successful VA. So let's start with a fun one, design. Having some design skills actually fulfills two different things. On one hand, it will be incredibly helpful to your own business because you'll be able to design elements for your own marketing materials, for your own website, your blog posts, social media, etc., etc. And number two, you'll also be able to use your skills with your own clientele. You might find yourself working with clients who have you whip up logos or images for their own blog posts or websites or images for their own social media. So design's a big one. And the best thing about design in 2021 is that you don't need to be a graphic designer or have gone to school to look good. Let's quickly hop into my laptop and peruse some of my favorite tools that are free that I think you should check out. Now you're probably already familiar with this screen right here. We're talking about Canva. Canva has a couple different tiers. There's the free tier, which I think is more than sufficient for day-to-day -day needs. And then there's also the pro tier, which is $119 per year. I definitely recommend, as I do with all tools, that you start free. Get used to it first. It's like driving a car. You would never go to a dealership, pick out a car on the lot, and pay for it. You would take it for a test drive first. You'd make sure that it suited your needs. It's the same for online tools. So don't hop into Canva's paid service until you've tried the free and to make sure it's really what you want to be using for yourself or and for your clients. Anyway, the reason that Canva is so popular nowadays is because it's a really simple drag and drop tool. And I'll show you what I mean. You can you can design nearly anything on Canva from presentations to ebook covers to covers for your YouTube to uh, social media posts. So I'll show you, for example, if you wanted to make a Twitter banner. Now, Canva has tons and tons and tons of preloaded templates for you to choose from. So if there is something that suits your needs, you would simply click on that particular banner and uh, edit it or just save it down as needed. But the nice thing about Canva is that almost everything is editable, meaning you can change the color, the background image, the fonts, the size of the fonts, the colors, etc., etc., uh, And everything is basically drag and drop, which means you pull elements into the photo, move it around as needed, very little professional editing skills necessary, which I think is what makes Canva such an easy and popular tool. Another simple tool that you can use for your own designs is remove.bg. This is a super smart and fast algorithm that removes backgrounds from almost any image. All you do is drag and drop your own photo into the remove.bg. And as you can see here, before I even finish that sentence, the website removed the background. You can also superimpose your photo in front of preloaded backdrops. We could make it blurry if we wanted to. You can also upload your own backgrounds. And I personally think that this website is really helpful for creating a more professional looking headshot. It's also wonderful if you ever have a client who asks you to spruce up a headshot. I've certainly had clients over the years ask me if I could make some sort of headshot happen for them uh, for their LinkedIn profile. So something like remove.bg makes it very easy, both for yourself and for your client to come up with a more professional looking image. Now, I am purposely avoiding some of the more intensive design elements, but if you are already a creative person and you're familiar with digital graphic manipulation, there are a couple free and open source tools that I want to tell you about. The first one being Krita. Krita is open source painting software. This is perfect for the assistant who's already familiar with digital drawings, digital creations, layering, brushes. The next skill you'll want to hone is your own marketing efforts. I find that an email service provider, this could be something like ConvertKit or MailChimp, which is what I use as well, is really helpful for a few different reasons. It can help you grow your own email list. It can help you get the word out about certain services or products that you offer. 
Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't go crazy with MailChimp. You'll hear and see, I think, many videos and many experts in this space who feel that you should have an active and growing email list. I am pretty hands-off. I maybe email everyone about once a month. Personally, it's because I don't enjoy getting daily emails from people or weekly newsletters. You may want to look into something like MailChimp, which is free up through a certain amount of subscribers. But so long as you have under 2000 subscribers, you should be able to use all of MailChimp services for free. You'll see right here from the homepage that there is a way for us to create a welcome email. Now this is the thing that I think makes MailChimp so powerful. Welcome emails can be sent out instantaneously. So anytime a potential client or a fellow VA comes to your website, landing page, link, whatever it is, and we'll talk a little bit more about websites uh, later in this video, but whenever somebody signs up to your email list, they will get an automatic email sent to their inbox with whatever it is that you've designed. Here's my very simple email. I've named it 50% off tag and any anytime somebody signs up to my own website, this is the email that they get automatically. If you decide to use an email service like MailChimp, you can certainly keep it simple as well. Maybe you want to just welcome your potential clients to your website. You could create an email that tells them a little bit more about yourself, your services, how you can help serve people, and link to your social media sites. Speaking of social media, having a social media presence nowadays is a must. There are so many platforms to choose from. There's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I'm sure I am missing one or two. Oh, Pinterest. There are so, so many. And the truth is, it's very hard to divide your time across all of these social media sites. So my recommendation is that you choose two and stick to those. Don't try to divide all your attention across every single platform because I think you'll find that you'll end up growing very slowly because you're dividing your attention because you've divided your attention and you'll be spending hours upon hours uploading content and monitoring and engaging your audience across 10 different platforms. So pick two. Once you do create social media profiles, you might want to look into a scheduler. Social media schedulers like Hootsuite or Buffer are fantastic because they allow you to pre-schedule content to go out at whatever time you decide. I like to pre-schedule anywhere from five to 10 tweets or LinkedIn posts ahead of time. And that way I can kind of do a brainstorm or a brain dump, get all the content that I need to out of my head onto the scheduler site. I can set it to go out at certain times or across certain weeks or months, or I can even set tweets to go out a year in advance. And then I click save. Once I set it and forget it, all of those social media content will be automatically sent out at whatever time I've pre-selected. I also wanna point out that nowadays, certain websites like Facebook and LinkedIn actually have their own embedded schedulers here. So you can go through and if you don't want to tweet something at a particular time, you can go ahead and set it up. The last two I want to mention is that certain platforms like Instagram don't always like to play nice with Hootsuite or Buffer. So there are certain services like Planoly that will help you schedule, plan out, and design your Instagram aesthetic. Now this is perfect for the virtual assistant who works a lot with visual clients or uh, maybe direct to consumer sales. The other tool I want to bring up is Tailwind. Now, Tailwind is quite popular for both Instagram and Pinterest, but I find that people predominantly use it with Pinterest scheduling. So if you are in Pinterest management or if Pinterest management is something that you're interested in getting into, or maybe you just want to share your own posts and blog posts across Pinterest, Tailwind is a good app for you to look into as well. A calendar scheduler like Acuity or Calendly, which is what I use, can be really helpful for you in managing your own calendar. So let's say you are an active participant on social media and you're getting people's attention. Potential clients wanna to talk to you, which is awesome. 
Rather than going back and forth between your two calendars, you can use a service like Calendly or Acuity. Acuity does cost about $30 a month. Calendly also has a free plan, by the way. It's limited what you can use for free, but I think it's more than sufficient if you're just looking to schedule time for you and you alone. When you sign up for a free Calendly, you can set up a reoccurring type. This could be a 30 minute meeting with potential clients. Then you'll add a location. You can either add your phone number or if you prefer to meet over video, Google Meet and Zoom are good options as well. And finally, you can add a couple details here. So this could be intro, oh my gosh, if I could spell intro to virtual services, or we could say something like fact finding for new clients. Once you've got that all set up, you can decide how far in advance you want people to schedule. We can also set a meeting duration. I think 30 minutes is more than sufficient, but you know, you do you. And then when you sync up Calendly to your calendar, Potential clients will be able to see your schedule. This is the one that you've denoted. So I don't take calls on Friday or over the weekend, uh, but you can decide when you want to take calls based on your time zone and your availability. The reason that I like Calendly so much, by the way, is because it does make you look a little more professional. Plus the benefit of having a service like this or Acuity is once a potential client does book a call with you through your link, this service will automatically send out all the details, including the phone number or the Zoom link that you've indicated you wanna connect over, and it will send a reminder email. So it pretty much takes away all the pre-planning and calendar coordination for you. Next, let's talk about a web presence. Nowadays, it does feel like you need to have an online presence. Here is my own personal website, which as you can see, I use solely for sales and not my VA services. Now you might be asking yourself, do I need a website for my own virtual assistant services? And my answer is, it depends. Personally, I think if you're a brand new VA and you have never before worked with a client, don't waste your time or money creating a website. And that's because if nobody knows you exist, nobody's going to know to go to your website. Trust me when I say it is very hard to get organic traffic to services like Squarespace or Wix. Something that I think you should look into as a brand new VA is a LinkedIn profile, however. And that's because many people don't know that LinkedIn actually functions like a website for you. It's actually a super powerful search engine. And when people search for people like you and me, virtual assistant, if you are not on this list, there's nearly a million virtual assistant results. And if you are not on LinkedIn, if you do not have virtual assistant in your title, then you are missing a golden opportunity because this is how people are going to find and connect with you. If in any event, if you find that you are making money, you are finding clients, and you do want to have a web presence that shows your hours of availability, your services, how to connect with you, your rates, then Squarespace and Wix are both great options. I'll say this about the two very briefly. I have had and built websites on both, and I can tell you that Wix is without a doubt the easier drag and drop option. Wix is essentially the Canva of websites. They have tons of templates and they make it very easy to either create your own from scratch or amend and edit their own templates so that you can have a great and professional looking website really, really quickly. Squarespace does look nice. And while they do have templates, I find that you need to be a little more tech savvy. So Squarespace should be for the person who's familiar with coding, who's comfortable with changing codes, and who's looking for something a little more in depth than just a drag and drop option. And the last two things I'll say about this is since Squarespace is a little more high end, I do find that organic traffic is a lot easier to send to Squarespace, whereas Wix does not have a very strong SEO presence. 
So what that basically boils down to is easier website, less organic traffic, or slightly more complicated website to build, but more potential traffic and more potential clients. The last thing I want to cover is video presence and video editing. Making handheld videos on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on TikTok are great because the barrier to entry is low. You hold up your phone, you film, you post. But if you are looking for something a little more in depth, don't discount editing. Don't discount learning how to edit your own videos. That's because you can upload your videos to things like YouTube or list them on your own website. Creating your own videos is awesome because in 2021, video content is king. People are reading less and they are watching more. The first tool that will help you create great videos is Pexels. You might be familiar with Pexels pictures. Those are royalty free pictures that you can use for blog posts, but not many people know they also have videos, endless hours upon hours of B roll and video content. So if you are working on something like a travel video for yourself or your clients, you can come here and get free B roll. No need to pay for any of these videos. When it comes time to actually editing your own videos, I think you have two main choices. Number one, you could always use iMovie. Now this is subject just for Mac, but the nice thing about iMovie is that it's completely free and it is super simple. It takes very little time to learn how to import, edit, and export videos on iMovie, but there are limitations. For most people, I think that Filmora is the better option. And the reason that I think Filmora is probably a better option for most people out there is because it's not as complicated as something like Final Cut Pro. You may have heard of that before, which is quite expensive, but more importantly, it's very in depth. You and I are not out to create the great American movie. But if you are looking to make YouTube videos for yourself and your services, this is a really good tool to take a look at. One last note about YouTube. YouTube is an incredibly powerful search engine. It actually surpassed Google several years ago for searches. So if you are a virtual assistant and you're looking to share your expertise, either the tech that you're using or the services that you're niching in, Putting out YouTube videos can be really helpful. Not only can potential clients come and find your content, but you can have an opportunity to connect with other virtual assistants too. And if you hit a certain number of watch time and subscribers, you'll eventually be able to monetize your YouTube channel as well, which is definitely a bonus for all of us freelancers.